good evening audience good evening audience and uh, welcome back uh, uh, we already done with uh, the first meeting about this uh, uh, fitness program the acc sbl case study and in september december 2021 uh, the first meeting we done and that was the question paper we discussed now today is our second meeting and uh, we need definitely we need third meeting so we'll have two more meeting like today's meeting and then uh, the tomorrow one and we'll be discussing the requirement the answer because we already done with the question paper uh, there are actually four requirements one of the requirement is about marketing the target marketing segmentation and csr thing the second requirement is about uh, public private partnership which we'll do today and the third one is it's the big data the mobile app and the fourth one is examiner's all time favorite internal controls and risk okay let's do two requirements today uh, the first one will be doing this uh, as i said examiner's favorite and this requirement is actually similar to acc f8 audit and assurance normally in audit and assurance they give you this requirement that hey this is the system so these are the controls already they give you established controls but definitely a weak control and they ask you to identify the weaknesses of control or identify the risk evaluate the risk and then you give your uh, expert opinion you give your recommendation in this in this acc sbl normally is not going to ask you identify the risk because in the question paper like in this program this optima fitness examiners all it in it's not only about this attempt in whatever attempt you see they give you internal audit report or any consultant report and they already identified the risk identified means they already highlighted the risk they hit hey, we know these risk these are the risk this you find in the question paper and then what you are supposed to do as a consultant as a project manager whatever that you now you don't need to identify the risk don't be that smart because the risk are already identified they want those risk to be assessed by you like how these risk going to impact the organization and then they ask you to uh, provide your recommendation or expert opinion or the safeguard whatever you say so this requirement is actually a very simple requirement i would say cash marks normally any xyz attempt you see okay so every other attempt you see this this risk management thing now what is the question here and you guys have already done with the with the with the question paper uh, it's already on my youtube channel as well or otherwise you have the what do you call the past paper okay uh, the requirement is the senior management of optima fitness which is the name of the company the fitness the gym uh, has always placed emphasis on local autonomy x y z prepare a report okay so this time they are not going to ask you the briefing notes because there's a difference between the briefing notes and the report in report you have to write in detail whereas in briefing notes they want you to write in paragraph with like i would say the quick thing the concise thing okay but in report they want something detailed other than the to from and the date this everything you write in the as a report format but i am talking about the body the body of the report and the body of the the briefing notes in briefing notes it is quick and short okay but in report you go in more detail so this time is asking you prepare a report for the presentation of next board meeting so yeah to the board of directors or whatever from whoever you are your project management company or you are a consultant or whatever and then date and everything prepare a report for presentation at the next board meeting which evaluates see is not going to ask you to identify because those things are those risks are already identified there were four risks you guys have done with the question paper okay uh, which evaluates the potential impact of the weaknesses which have been identified yeah it says which have been identified in optimas internal control activities and recommends action to address those weaknesses okay and this time they are going to uh, give you professional marks for evaluation skills most of the students they are confused between analysis skills and evaluation skills see in analysis skills the data is already given you just have to create the links normally in risk management question it ask you about analysis skill as well but in evaluation skills you actually do some sort of you know the judgment some sort of decision some sort of conclusion thing that the data is given 
but now you have to see whatever the decision you're going to make or how whatever you the providing you the the conclusion thing is it worth it like in financial terms i say cost benefit analysis something okay so the professional skill marks are available for demonstrating evaluation skills to objectively appraise the implication of internal controls see if you only identify or little evaluate the internal controls it's nobody will take it seriously you have to evaluate it and provide what it says implication how it's going to affect the activities of optima fitness I'll give you an example let's say you come to my organization you are a project manager you come to my organization and you tell me hey mr mirchawala these are the risk i have identified and you are telling me these are the risk i have identified in your organization what would be my response i would say okay and i'll move on but if you not only if you identify the risk and then you will tell me how it's going to affect my my finance how it's going to affect my organization efficiency how it's going to affect my stakeholders like how it is going to affect my overall success of the organization then i will definitely stop and i'll ask you okay can you tell me the recommendation so evaluation and implication that's very important when you are evaluating it when you are evaluating the risk you have to provide the impact also how it is adversely and obviously adversely not favorably adversely impact the organization activities and definitely then the solution that's very easy so <clears throat> Uh, internal control system evaluation and recommendation the first weakness which i have not identified it's already identified in the in the in the question paper the first one is lack of review of monthly performance review report like whatever the performance and the appraisal they do nobody is actually reviewing the employees performance or the branch performance or the overall organization performance say lack of review of monthly performance report you know that if there is no performance review how it's going to affect there is no set of data there's no set of information it means there is no control actually there's weak control you don't know the direction whether you're going up or down your organization is going up or down nobody knows that okay so that's yes uh, the first thing is it says no control and obviously when there is no control when you are not reviewing the appraisal thing ultimately it's declining and we don't know like we cannot we what is the purpose of report appraisal report reviewing report so that it gives you early warning to the senior management so and then what's the other problem the casual judgment when there is no formal appraisal control and formal appraisal evaluation then what will happen whether it's right or wrong it's all depend upon the casual judgment informal judgment of the manager informal judgment of the director which we never wanted okay and then obviously resource wastage the shareholders funds are misused when there is no lack of review of monthly report now how you going to provide control what are the safeguards safeguards the first safeguard is obviously the hierarchical controls hey a uh, regular review regular monthly reporting and regular review for example you are a supervisor the assistant manager is going to review this is called hierarchical controls and then uh, in the assist uh, the, the the performance of the assistant manager would be reviewed by maybe manager and then by the senior director and all that or if this is a branch then there is a there is a guy who is controlling two three branches he will be controlling and then the sales director and all that that's called the hierarchical control this is one of the recommendation you can provide okay the second one is obviously regular monthly review plus evidence let me write here evidence because let's say if you have reviewed it if you are a senior manager or director or the branch head or sales director if you have reviewed it where is the evidence so there should be proper documentation there should be proper documentation of the report whatever you doing it monthly budget or monthly appraisal you reviewing regular because if it's not regular then whenever you feel like you do it it happens sometime okay to this month i'm busy i'm not going to do it next month i'll see sometimes they do it quarterly no we need regular intervals plus we need evidence that's called documentation and plus action okay the manager has reviewed he has documented everything but what about the actions if you have taken any action for example training and development for example hiring more resources or firing existing employees whatever what are the action that has to be documented so you need to write all these things okay then <clears throat> the second one is staff not qualified <coughs> we are talking about the fitness 
industry, the service sector. And in service sector, whether it's teaching, uh, medical, lawyers, what's very important thing is the staff. Here, they have hired, you have seen in the question, they have hired people without looking at their qualification. And when there is no check and balance on recruitment and selection, what happened? That they are hiring people without any licenses because you know we're talking about the trainers in the gym we're not talking about the teachers we're talking about the trainers here those who provide exercises and all that and they provide you advices they'll give you expert opinion about your health they give you some recommendation about your diet and all that people are not qualified and they're doing it <clears throat> what is going to be the how it's going to impact the optima fitness obviously the reputation and the brand image reputation and the brand image when people are like this obviously the customer will come in and there will be so many accidents so okay so chances of accidents the people those your trainers are not qualified then there is a possibility high risk health and safety risk chances of accidents which ultimately affect your brand image the optima fitness and your reputation and you know that you already in the question they told you about the b fitness program b fit program as well which is the public private partnership i'll be discussing today and then if there would be any risk any accident or something will happen obviously there is a possibility of being sued legal issue in case of licensing and problem what are the recommendations? Obviously, very simple, recruitment and selection. Because I said RNS, recruitment and selection, control over recruitment and selection. It should not be like this, that, hey, if I'm the branch manager, I can hire anyone. No, there should be a centralized, centralized recruitment and selection policy. That whenever we, there would be a requisition for a staff, because obviously there should be a requisition first. Whenever there is a requisition, they should look at the centralized policy of recruitment and selection. Once it satisfies the, the policy, then there definitely there should be a process. Let me write here. Recruitment and selection process. Maybe it should be a decentralized level, but approved by the senior and then final by the board or whatever. So centralized system of hiring. Regular training is very important. That's called, you can call it CBD as well, professional development training, the continuous professional development training, because you see new machineries, new equipment, new technology and fitness coming up, new apps are coming up. We'll talk about the, the mobile app in the question. Uh, the new things are coming up. And I, I know our trainers, when we hired them, they were qualified at that time. They were expert at that time. But the thing is with the passage of time, with the change in customer needs, with the change in environment, with the change in technology, with the change in new equipments, with the change in new uh, medical things, with the change in new case studies coming up, we need to have regular training of the staff, okay? It's not only about just you hire people. A staff not qualified means a staff not only for the first time. We need to have continuous training. It's like a, I would say when you talk about professional development, it is like a, 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 a cell phone battery. A cell phone battery, it's not like that just it's, if it's charged just one time and it's good for a lifetime. No, no, no. You have to charge it regularly. So that's regular training is very important. And then obviously how they are working, there should be a feedback. Or I would say this is three, sorry, 360 degree appraisal. What is 360 degree appraisal? See, uh, in, in past, we used to have only top-down appraisal. That, uh, in bureaucracy, it still works, okay? And what, what is called a uh, top-down appraisal? Top-down appraisal means your manager review your performance, monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever, okay? But now comes up, upward appraisal as well. Upward appraisal means the manager performance is being assessed by your subordinates. Like this, he's the manager, and his performance, we want to review his performance, the senior manager. So they're going to ask from the subordinates. For example, uh, my feedback. One of the thing is like the senior management, they review my performance. But the second is my student give me the feedback. So that's called upward appraisal. Then comes customer appraisal. When you go to a restaurant, they give you, after when you're done with your food and everything, they give you a feedback form. That's called customer appraisal. That happened in the gym and everywhere. Okay, so customer appraisal, employee appraisal, senior manager appraisal, that's called the 360 degree appraisal. So feedback, and 360 degree appraisal is very important because you hired people, you said they were qualified, you're providing them training, but based on what? You're providing them training based on appraisal. Okay, this was the appraisal last month happened and now these are the results. Hey, you need training. You need on the job training, you need off the job training or whatever. So this is one of the recommendations. Then 
unauthorized access. Very common in the gym, in the fitness industry. You just get, some people, they don't take admission and still they're allowed to go in, use the facility and come back. Second is, uh, which is also one of the weak control that you get the access, you, you get the admission, you provide admission fee and all that, and you pay a monthly fee. But let's say you pay for two, three months. Once three months are done, your access should be denied then. You're not supposed to get in because you're not authorized, okay? But after three months, the, week, the systems are so weak that nobody cares. You just come in, everybody knows you, hey, and you just go do the facilities and all that. Unauthorized access. When there is unauthorized access means people are coming in, they're using the facility, you're using the shareholders fund, and in return, you're getting nothing unauthorized access. The organization, the Optima Fitness is getting nothing. Like people are coming in who are not supposed to get in, okay? So now what happened? What is the impact? The first one is obviously the resources which should be, which, which are actually out for other people, you are actually using it. The customers are using it. So resources, shareholders, funds are misused. Serious security breach. This is very important point. The theft, terrorist, and all the bad people may come in because when you give admission, obviously you take the ID cards, you take the social security number, you take NIC, whatever. Okay, but if the unauthorized person coming in, you have no record of that person. You have no data of that person in case of any terrorist, any theft, anything happened. No matter you have the cameras and everything, but you don't have the document. Hey, this guy was doing it. When you repeat the thing, when something bad happened, you repeat it. You said, this guy, where is the document? He was unauthorized. We don't have any data. Then obviously it's a financial loss. So you are actually, the person is interested in doing the work, workout and all that, and using all the facilities. And, but your controls, your weak controls and your system is aligned without the fee. So financial loss, obviously. Traffic plus unrealistic traffic. See what happened every day, every month, every 15 days, you actually project. So this particular time we'll have 100 people here because your facility, your resources are limited. It's not like that you have, obviously you have a swimming pool, a basketball court, a baseball court, a gym and all that. So those are limited facility and for obviously limited number of people. So you actually project okay, right now we have, this is the data at four o'clock in the morning, this number of people come five, six, seven in the evening job people. But now what will happen? You have the data for authorized people and that's why you're projecting and you are, you are actually allocating the resources based on that particular data. Then at five o'clock, we need four trainers in the gym. At six o'clock, we need this at seven o'clock. But what will happen here? Unauthorized people are also coming in. So unrealistic crowd, which was never in your budget, extraordinary traffic and may also affect genuine customer satisfaction because let's say 100 people should be here now what is happening <coughs> 50 more people are here so those 100 people obviously they are going to write bad reviews about it and that's not your fault also either because you are not preparing unrealistic budget this is actually weakness of controls that people are coming in which were never a part of the budget now what should be the recommendation the first one is obviously physical check. There should be a physical check, an ID card or uh, a biometric biometric system or the mobile app, which has the access and you just scan it and go. Biometric system, you can have doors also, smart doors. So when you put the app is scan and automatically gives you access, app scanning, key fobs for special facilities. For example, if someone is, unauthorized, if someone is not authorized, he may go to the gym, he may use the restroom and all that, but he's not supposed to use other facilities, like let's say steam, swana, jacuzzi and all that. So they give you key fob for those facilities, like a scanning type thing, okay? You can also outsource. This is one of the good points because you are working on your primary activities the trainer, the training, uh, <coughs> marketing about your fitness thing, projecting and all that. What about the security thing? How about we outsource this? How about we outsource this particular thing to a security company or we can outsource this to any IT or tech company? So this is one of the recommendation. Then the last, there, there were four weaknesses. The last one is unauthorized payment. 
unauthorized payment. We have seen in the question paper that they actually approved it. Okay, the swimming pool facility and all that, which was not, uh, which was not required actually. So now unauthorized payment, or you are actually approving the expenses, approving the assets which never needed, or even if it's needed, it was not authorized. Okay, so now when there is unauthorized payment, obviously, once again misuse of shareholders fund, the shareholders equity and things will go down. Your profitability will go down. Quality issues in absence of no tendering. When you are giving complete authority to the <clears throat> to the manager and he can do anything, he can approve anything, what will happen? There will be no healthy competition. Because when you go for tendering thing, hey, we need to construct a swimming pool and we're looking for vendors. So when there is no tendering, when there is no invitation or something like that, what will happen? Quality issue. Quality issue in the absence of no tendering. Culture of fraud culture of fraud, like the referral money. Okay, if you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, I'll give you, I'll, I'm the manager at the fitness, I'm the branch manager, I'm the branch head. I'll approve, I'll give you this contract, you can do the swimming pool company and hey, the swimming pool manager, the, the, the other party, you can give me some, you know, under table money, some cut money. Conflict of interest, obviously, when you are working for your own personal interest, although you are an employee, you are the branch manager you had, you should work for the organizational interest. But here there is no alignment of interest because now you, you're doing what? You are actually working for your personal interest. Who allows you? The system, the weak system, the weak controls allows you actually. It's obviously you're spending when no needed. So what will happen when you are actually spending the fund where the funds where, where it was actually not needed, it means the other areas where the firms, where, where there is a genuine need, where the customer needs some sort of new facility or refurbishment of facility or remodeling of facility, you will definitely, organization will definitely lack there. And ultimately it will affect the brand image of the organization. What are the recommendations? Same like recruitment and selection. There should be a centralized policy of spending. If there is $5,000 spending, okay, the branch manager is gone. This 5,000 plus, 5,000 and 10,000, this guy, hierarchical control. 10,000 plus, the board will, okay. You do the budgeting thing, fixed budgeting, and then obviously authorization plus documentation, let me write here, for the evidence, okay? This is the, this is the requisition coming in for the particular expense. Somebody has to authorize it, and obviously the documentation, so that you can have the, Evidence later on. <clears throat> then physical regular visits, physical regular visits. What is the problem? The problem is that we have given complete sole authority to the branch manager and what as a board or as the audit committee or as an internal auditor, what is the fear? The fear is they're spending, they're spending amount which is not needed or maybe they're doing unauthorized payment. So you can, you can have some physical visits also. So with physical visits, obviously you can see, okay, this is something new. Where is the authorization? Where is the documentation of that? So see this requirement, there were four, there were four risks which were already identified in the question. You just have to create, you have to evaluate it, find the implication. That is very important, the impact, go in more detail, impact. And then you provide the recommendation, simple. All right. <clears throat> and obviously your professional marks is for the evaluation skill, like the way we are evaluating. If this thing will happen, it is going to affect this, this, and this. And due to this thing, this is gonna happen. With this risk already identified, this is the connection, this could be the connection, and it is going to uh, create this problem. This is called evaluation, that you are, you know, uh, you are creating a judgment with a set of data available you have, okay. <clears throat> Now, the second requirement is, mm -hmm, all right, okay. This is the public-private partnership. Just let me grab water, hold on. Okay. Do you know what is public-private partnership? See, when you say public-private partnership, means you know what is public sector, the activities, the departments, the organizations which are owned by government and private sector like you and me guys, okay? And our organizations. So 
Uh, when you say public-private partnership, it means the government side for any of the department, there are any activity or any special activity, not only existing department, maybe any special uh, venture or something. It's between the public, the government and the private party. That's called the public-private partnership. In this case, we have this uh, BFIT program, okay? BFIT program is actually because Optima Fitness, it's not come under public uh, public sector. It's a government, uh, it's, it's, it's a private sector actually. It's a private fitness thing. But government health department, we can have a lot of examples. Sometime in education also, let's say, the, let's say our government is proposing a training and development workshop for the women, for children, for any particular class something. So what they want, they say, okay, we lack some resources. We need some resources from the private sector. So they give, they invite uh, private parties, private colleges, private uh, teachers and all that. And after tendering, and obviously after all the evaluation, they approve and that's called, and they give a name. Okay, this is a public private partnership. And obviously it's done very formally. We make arrangements and then definitely the, the taxpayer funds are used because the government is actually buying the buying the, the services from private sector. So there are obviously pros and cons for that. Okay, here we have this BFIT program. BFIT, it's the name of that particular venture. Optima is the company, the case study. And then we have the government health department. So what is the requirement? Analyze the potential opportunities and threats. So not asking the strength and weakness. Sometimes students, what they do, whenever they see opportunities and threats and fears and all that, they do the complete sort analysis. It is not required. You're just wasting your time and wasting your marks, okay? Wasting your resources. Analyze the potential opportunities and threats, only opportunities and fears, that's it. Which Optima must consider, Optima must consider, not the government. Don't care about the government. Don't look at the government side. The government is ready to do it. It's you, your brand and your organization. And obviously you are the project manager of this particular organization, which Optima must consider in relation to understanding a collaborative partnership. It's a collaboration. Obviously it's not between private, but it's a collaborative partnership in relation to undertaking a collaborative partnership with the Department of Health to deliver the BFIT program. And second requirement is explain what is meant by value for money. Okay, we'll do it later on. Now, what you need to consider as, a op, as an Optima Fitness Senior Manager or the Project Manager, how are you gonna evaluate this BFIT program? Okay, and now what they're asking analysis skills. See, this is analysis skills here. Like you have to create a linkage whatever the data is given, you create a linkage, okay? Because sometimes, see, lack of analysis. What is lack of analysis? What is the absence of analysis skills? You are the head of Optima Fitness. The government is saying, okay, we'll give you X million dollars and we want to do this BFIT program. You said, oh wow, government is gonna do it. We will be the partner of government and we'll have this million dollar. Let's do it. Everything looks great. It means there is a lack and absence of analysis skills that you are not creating a links. Okay. Now here, what we have to see BFIT program proposed evaluation, uh, public private partnership. I said, the first paragraph will talk about the opportunities, the positive side. Okay. The options, I would say the options, possible options or favorable options. Favorable options we'll have once we shake hand with the government. The first one, obviously, you will have a competitive edge in your market. I'm not talking about the government market, in your market. Once you are in this venture, you will have a competitive edge. Why? Explain it. You will have a competitive edge because your other guys, your other, uh, 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 the, the other businesses in your, or other supplier in your industry, other fitness, let's say you are Optima, their life fitness, one is orange fitness and all that why they are not selected by the government and now you are a part of the government team, a department of health or XYZ ministry. So you definitely will have a competitive edge. Hey, not only the consumer market, look at us, they come and get our services, our trainer services, but at the same time, the government is also uh, asking us to provide the service. It means you will have some sort of your, you know, a good, good brand image compared to your competitor. So you will definitely have a competitive edge and obviously your brand image will go up. It may go down also. That's the fear, okay? 
it's because right now the government is your is in your favor and, and we are talking about the the friendship side okay the good positive side then you can attract more investors why reason when you talk about this there's so many criticism on government and public sector but the good part is the positive side is the sustainability the financial sustainability see when when you have collaboration with private people obviously they have limited funds they have limited shareholders and all that but when you talk about government the government has you know access to every person's wallet the taxpayer okay so when you when you talk about the government financial stability the sustainability normally is not an issue although government also collapse government collapse but in normal case financial stability is there so when you talk about this be fit program with optima and the government the existing shareholders confidence will go up and obviously the new investor they will try to come in because now you have some sort of agreement which is actually your asset is your intangible asset and your strength that hey they have some good agreements which are financially very sound and financial guaranteed actually okay so you may attract more investors and maybe more ventures okay we have satisfied the government we can have new private partnership as well or maybe you can have more programs with the government in future your profile and your bio data that's yes like uh, see some audit firms they do local services they provide local services they local audit firm but when you talk about the big four firms no matter they work in small country okay a third world country but they always write we are global firm we are sister firm of xyz country we have presence in 185 countries 130 countries and all that so that's always once again a good competitive edge and you write in your profile okay so this thing yes this thing the profile and the bio that we are actually we are the part and parcel we provide services to the government so obviously their profile and their things will go up it will also help you know when i said competitive edge and all that not only attract more investors but more members also their confidence will go up sustainable financial benefits and all that yes now what are the fears because obviously there are threats also you can write fears or say threats let me write here threats okay what are the threats with the in the public private partnership or the be fit program or the optima fitness they should evaluate uh the first issue is limited resources because already you are providing services when i said limited resources it mean human resource it could be your facility and so when already you are providing services to your existing members you have existing members coming in they do the gym and all that and you have limited number of trainers and already we have seen so many weaknesses now with limited resources now you are shaking hand with a big elephant because government is totally a different size of animal okay so now you are shaking hand with in you are entering in a big project so limited resources that could be a big failure okay <clears throat> risk of existing customer dissatisfaction if your whole attention because you know there are differences in culture as well the government is has a bureaucratic culture and obviously when you talk about the bureaucratic culture they have so many form filling exercise they have so many rule based thing uh, like so many red tape is something so obviously you'll have to the the management of the optima fitness they will have to spend more time on those bureaucracies and on those form filling exercise and red tape is something so there is a possibility that your attention while dealing with this project or completing this project your attention may be diverted from uh, your existing customer satisfaction or your primary value chain activity the correct word to maybe this secondary type venture so risk of existing customer dissatisfaction then the big problem it's when it's a practical problem i have seen this practical problem cultural differences between the bureaucracy the public sector and the private sector obviously one is the non profit organization they don't need to report it to the shareholder they they have no shareholders okay they just get tax from the taxpayer and then it's a hitler approach so cultural difference they the the people in the bureaucracy they've been working for long and they never work for profit they never work for profit 
Whereas in private sector, what is the ultimate goal? The bottom line, which is the profit, which is the commercial objective, that's it. So could be a cultural difference. If this project is flopped, this was I said in the, in the opportunities, that the brand image will go up if it is successful. But if in case, if it's flop, you can't fight with the government, okay? The media, everything, everything is under control by the government. So the let's say if the government says something bad about you, it will definitely come in the media. And if this particular project flop, of not only you will have a financial loss with this BFIT program, but at the same time, you will lose your competitive edge. Your competitors will make fun and your existing customer, they will say, okay, goodbye. Differences and objectives also. In this BFIT program, obviously, when you entering in this venture, you will have a different objective. You have some sort of shareholders demand and all that. And secondly, the government, the government will have a different set of objectives. So there is a possibility. This is a possible th threat. This is a possible fear that if the objectives are different and it's not properly aligned, so maybe then comes this thing. Yes, the second requirement, value for money. Explain what is meant by the value for money obligation of the Department of Health as mentioned in its proposal and evaluate the potential challenges this may pose for Optima in delivery of the BFIT program. I repeat, explain what is meant by value for money. Value for money, you all know that three is, let me write here. Value for money, this also you've done in, uh, I think in F8, F5 and all that, three E's. Economy, efficiency, and your effectiveness. And you know that economy means the input, that you try to get the input, the quality resource in least possible consideration, okay? For example, XYZ resource I have to obtain, XYZ quality resource and this particular standard, if I'm getting in $15, how about I get in $10? That means I'm achieving the economy. What is efficiency? Efficiency means the output. Whatever the resource I have obtained, it means I have achieved the economy. Whatever the resource I have obtained, now I have to utilize it, okay? So maximum utilization, it means with least possible wastage rate and maximum output is called efficiency. And what is effectiveness? Effectiveness means the impact, the overall objective, the achieving of overall objective. Why did you obtain the resource? Why are you utilizing? Why are you hiring this? Why did you have this name? Why marketing and all that? What was the overall objective? If that objective is achieved, it means the three E's have been achieved, especially the last E, which is called the effectiveness and the impact. For example, why are you taking this course? Just to get the clear, just to get the pass. If you get the pass, it means effectiveness has been achieved. If we do it real quick, it means efficiency is achieved, okay? In least possible price, you get the course, that is economy. So sometimes, you know, there is a trade-off. If you try to achieve the economy, then you lose the efficiency. If you work on efficiency, sometimes you lose the objective, which is the effectiveness, okay? Now, what they're asking, explain what is meant by the value for money. That's the cash marks, okay? Well, definition of value for money, obligation, of the Department of Health, like the government side. Now, now they're talking about the government side, that what is the relationship with this concept value for money has to do with the Department of Health, as mentioned in the proposal, in the question paper, and evaluate the potential challenges this may pose for Optima in delivery of the BFIT program. Obviously, not only in the first requirement, you look at the opportunities and threats, but at the same time, you have to evaluate your co-partner, the partner's obligation as well. Because now when you are hugging your partner, when you're entering in the venture, not only the strength you are getting it, but at the same time, the liability of the person. It seemed like, like marriage, the joint venture the collaboration, the partnership, not only you get the asset side, but you, you get the uncontrollable liabilities as well. Now, value for money. The first one is the economy. Obviously, the quality criteria, this could be a challenge. This could be a challenge for Optima Fitness because you have to evaluate. It's not about the government. The government, obviously, government has the obligation. And now do not think like uh, you're sitting in, third world country, they never said it, okay? You, you assume that government has some sort of obligation towards 
towards their own audits, towards their towards the public, towards their stakeholders. So obviously the quality criteria, quality criteria, which is the obligation of Department of Health, this Optima Fitness, when they entering in this BFIT program, they will have to make sure whatever the resources they're getting it, those quality criteria, those quality standards have to be achieved now. One thing very important here you have to discuss is the subjectivity. What is the definition of quality? And this is a real thing. Something which is low quality, let's say this particular phone, I would say it's a very high quality phone. Maybe the other guy standing here as a bystander, he said, no, it's a low quality phone. It means quality is also very subjective. Quality criteria, high quality criteria, it's a subjective approach. So there is a possible conflict between this economy thing. You say, okay, we are providing this consideration. We are paying this consideration for the equipment, for the training and whatever, for the trainers. And we getting this thing, maybe that particular quality is not up to the mark of the bureaucracy, okay? So quality criteria, conflicting, yeah, this I mentioned, or subjective, there is also a possibility of limited budget. See, when you talk about government, in government, the budgets are approved. This is the term we use, okay? We have this, the June is coming up, July is coming up, December is coming up, different countries are different. We are announcing the budget. So when they announce the budget, they actually allocate the resources, okay? This is for infrastructure, this is for education, this is for defense and all that. Government has to work with the limited budget, whatever is allocated. Obviously that budget is there financial stability, everything is there, but the budget is already allocated by the cabinet, by the assembly, by the, by the big boys, okay? Now, whatever the quality you're getting, whatever the long-term impact, there's a possibility. Whatever the convincing power you have, they have this particular limited budget. And in that budget, you have to work. So there is a possibility that <clears throat> maybe uh, we'll have to, let me write here, compromise, on quality due to the budget thing. And let me tell you one more interesting thing here. Let's say the government budget is, I've seen this practical thing, don't want to quote anything here. Let's say the budget is $1 million. At the end of the year or during the period, the government has to spend that $1 million. Even if it is not required, the government departments, they have to spend it because if they don't spend it, what will happen? Ultimately, that amount will go back and not only it will go back to the authorities, but at the end, they will have some inquiry also, especially in third world countries. They will have inquiry. Hey, we assigned $1 million to, for the training and development budget or XYZ budget. Why didn't, why didn't you spend it? So the officer, that's why what they do, they just spend it. Even if it's not needed, they just spend it. In the previous department, we talked about the swimming pool thing. We said, no, in the private sector, no matter what the budget says, if it is not needed, do not spend it. But in bureaucracy, if the budget is allocated, you have to spend it even if it's not needed. So yes, so these are the two things, limited budget and the budget has to spend, okay? Second, efficiency. Obviously for Optima Fitness, Optima fitness, when they talk about efficiency, it means they're utilizing resources least efficiently with least possible, you know, whether it's labor hours or machine hours or uh, gym fitness hour in terms of equipment and they want ultimate output, maximum output. Why? So that they can have maximum profit. Because when you talk about efficiency, efficiency means what? Profit. Least possible resources when your cost will go down and the profit will go up. So when you talk about Optima, Optima will have some sort of shareholders demand. Okay, we need X percent of ROI. You can write this term, return on investment. Huh? Our return on equity is this thing. Our dividend payout ratio is X, Y, Z thing. So they have some sort of shareholders demand in the private sector. But in the government sector, they are not for profit organization. When it's a not for profit organization, they don't have as such pressure. What is the pressure they have? This is the resource, just utilize it, that's it. They don't care about that efficiency, which is the private sector. That's why 
That's why when you are retired from the private sector, no matter after 20, 30 years at the position of CEO and all that, and if you, oh, sorry, let's say you're retired from the government. Let's say you're an officer, CSP officer or anything, and you retired from the government after 20, 30 years. And now after the retirement from the government, obviously the doors are closed now, you're retired as per law. Now, if private company offers you, hey, will you be our chief executive officer because you are the commissioner or you are the head or flyer? How about how, if you become our chief executive officer or the project manager or the senior manager, whatever, it will be a big flop. Reason, for the last 30 years, you work for nonprofit organization. You never work for the bottom line. You never work for commercial objective. And now you are the CEO of the organization whose ultimate objective is shareholders profit. So this is the problem. Public sector has to spend, has to spend, okay? Without as such accountability of profit. This is very important. There is no accountability of profit. It's just the nonprofit organization. These are the funds, just utilize it. So there would be a problem in efficiency thing. So efficiency, which is because they will become, they will try to become more efficient in the BFIT program. But this guy, the government, Maybe they will have some more demands here. Effectiveness, effectiveness. Normally in government sector, when they foresee the impact, when they foresee the objective, it normally comes in the long term. It's not like a one day cricket match or 2020 cricket match, or it's not like a restaurant. You just eat it and give you the feedback right away. No, let's say when the government announced XYZ budget on defense or against the terrorism, or against, or maybe against the party, or maybe about the health, or about the education. On the very next day, you see everybody is literate. No, after 20 years, after five years, after 10 years. Okay, we are planning for plantation, a green system. After 20 years, after 30 years. So normally, when you talk about the government objective, the impact comes in the long run. Whereas in private sector, you normally want short-term objectives, a quick returns they want to see. So there could be a possibility of this impact here. It could be in long term. Then differences in KPIs, key performance indicators. For the government, maybe it's not a delay, but for private sector, it could be a delay. They say, okay, this is not good. This is a failure for us. This performance indicator is a failure for us. We give you grade to this, but they say, no, for us, it is somewhere B or C. Differences in KPIs. Then some objectives are not measurable. Some goals are not measurable. That could be a challenge for Optima Fitness because I just said, there are so many political and government announcements, especially in the parties, the ruling parties. There's so many announcements and so many manifestos which are not measurable, so many things, okay? So when it's not measurable, how can you align your objectives? How can, how can you ensure this effectiveness, this impact? So that could be a challenge for Optima Fitness. Then uncontrollable factors may affect the project. This is a big fear also. We can write in the fear also here, uncontrollable factors, uncontrollable environmental factors uncontrollable environmental factors. That could be a fear, okay? So this, you can write in effectiveness as well. Then, okay, both are on the same page and they wanna to try to achieve the objective, but the, both the organization have challenges, okay? So uncontrollable factors, maybe the environmental factors, something that may affect the project and may become a failure. You can write other points as well, but this is a very easy requirement, value for money. See, these two requirements, not, not this public private one, but this one, the value for money, this is actually F8. This is actually F5. We already done the concept and everything. And see the SBL examiner, no, he never asked about what and define and explain. But if it is say, okay, define or explain this thing, it means the marks are here. I don't have the pocket here, okay. And then uh, this, uh, control thing, the risk thing, you have done so many case studies in f and obviously so many case studies in SPL also. So you'll see in every other attempt, okay, this is the system, these are the weaknesses and all that. It could be difficult, it could be difficult. I would say it could be very interesting also. If just give you the proposal, just give you the report and you have to identify the risk. 
and then you creating impact and all that. So obviously the guy sitting next to you and then, then there, there would be so many risks you might identify. But here in SBL, what does normally, it gives you, okay, these are the four risks, these are the three risks. Like you don't need to identify. You just evaluate, create impact and give us your ex uh, expert opinion. We have two more requirements. Uh, one is about the marketing, which is the target marketing, market, sorry, I'm saying market segmentation and uh, about the CSR. And one requirement is for big data and mobile app. That's very interesting. Both are interesting actually. So I'll see you tomorrow then. And I'll upload it in the LMS and my YouTube channel as well. Thank you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And you have a great day now. Thank you.